Uh, and, and this is one of those moments where we're yucking it up, we're having fun, and then we have to do and get serious. The Deshaun Watson case still percolating. Some developments today. And once again, we're only going to talk about it when there's news. We're not going to go out of our way to talk about it. We'd rather not talk about it. I'd rather it have never happened. I'd rather that these incidents that underpin the 22 lawsuits against Deshaun Watson and now at least two individuals who have gone to the police had never occurred. Whatever transpired in those moments I wish that those things had never even had the occasion to occur, that we wouldn't have the ability to discuss this for a minute or a second. But here we are. And today what happened was, for the first time, Deshaun Watson, through his lawyer, Rusty Harden, answered one of the cases in court with a strategy that I believe will apply to all of the cases except the two where we now know the names of plaintiffs. That would leave 20 cases where the plaintiff is proceeding under the Jane Doe pseudonym, an effort by Deshaun Watson to get the cases dismissed unless the individuals attach their names to it. It's not a very complicated high-end legal argument. It's based on the Texas Rules of Civil Procedure, and the argument is only minor children can proceed with pseudonyms as plaintiffs. You have to give enough information in a lawsuit so the person knows who is suing them. And the sad commentary in all of this, Miles, frankly, and I know Deshaun Watson's camp isn't real thrilled about this point being made, but the reality is the guy's had so many private massages over the course of the last two years, he can't figure out who the people are. He can't keep track. He's had so many. He doesn't know who's suing him because he's had so many massages over the last two years. He can't piece it all back together again. So, I, look, I, I thought this was going to be the approach, and this is just the first step in what could be a long and convoluted and drawn-out process. But, yeah, for the individuals whose names aren't out there, Rusty Harden, on behalf of Deshaun Watson, trying to get the names to be released. Yeah, I think what you, the point that you just made that uh, Deshaun Watson's had so many masseuses that he can't figure out which ones they are. I mean, they've been able to identify 18 that at least were able to speak in favor of Deshaun Watson with that statement uh, that was released, or the statements, I should say, that were released last week. But then you add that to the 22 that we already know of who have sued him under the pseudonym Jane Doe. And now we have uh, at least 40 cases of him getting private massages. So that's the only ones that we know of, right? I'm sure that there could be more individuals out there, So, but we're already at upwards of 40. And so once you start getting into that territory, it, it really feels like it's an almost unheard of situation for a professional athlete to go to that many different faults just to get a massage. That, I think, is, I agree with you, Mike, just one of these weird, unfortunate things that are coming out from Deshaun Watson's camp. That It's just an unintended point that they obviously are making because this is the thing that is now out there, and this is what they have to contend with in order to start to get these cases resolved. There will be one or more hearings tomorrow morning on the emergency petition to have these individuals named. And I, I frankly think that what the strategy here is, because I, I don't want to get too deep into the legal weeds, but you don't have to have an emergency hearing. You just file a response to the complaint in every case saying we ask that the case be dismissed unless the individual identify her name. But that would take some time to play out. There would be a brief submitted on behalf of Deshaun Watson. Then there's a period of time that goes by. A brief is submitted on behalf of Tony Busby's clients in each of these 21 cases. There's a hearing in each of the 21 cases. That takes time. I think what's going on here, Miles, is that Rusty Harden has taken this approach to apply settlement pressure to Tony Busby in order to get him to come to the table in a clear, predictable, linear fashion, my guess is, and this is just a guess, my guess is they've had a hard time pinning Tony Busby down regarding the potential of discussing settlement because he understands the value of chaos at this juncture of the litigation. Because from Deshaun Watson's perspective, to the extent that he has had his wake-up call, and I would guess that he has by now, especially after Tuesday's press conference, that Deshaun Watson is willing and ready, and he's definitely able to find a way to reach a settlement that is acceptable to each of these 22 individuals and move on with his life, take whatever punishment the league office may mete out against him. And I think at this point, with this many cases, and after what we saw Tuesday from Ashley Solis, there will be punishment. But 
You can't clear the decks. You can't move forward with your career. You can't get traded to Miami or wherever you would like to be traded if this litigation is going to linger and linger and linger. So by having this hearing tomorrow, by trying to get a ruling from the judge that would say all of these individuals have to either release their names or go away, basically, then that is the occasion for some of them, most of them, but not all of them, because two of them have already come forward with their names, to sit down and try to settle these cases if it's valuable to them to never have their names disclosed. That's the key. There's value to them in not having their names disclosed. That value translates to the potential to settle the case. I really do think that's what this is about. There's always something going on behind what's happening on the front lines in litigation. And I think behind the scenes, they're trying to pin down Tony Busby, and this is the way to pressure him to come to the table and have a meaningful discussion so Deshaun Watson can try to get this settled so he can get traded to a team other than the Texans and move on with his career. After he has his reckoning, he makes amends with everyone involved and then takes whatever punishment he's going to get from 345 Park Avenue. Well, right. There's going to be some sort of accountability from the league office, and they, he has to take accountability for his own actions in whatever that form that may take. And obviously, when we're talking about civil suits, which is what we are in settlements, then that form is going to at least be money. And I think at least at this point, because of the way the court of public opinion has uh, gone, I guess we can say right now, especially after the press conference with Ashley Solis, I mean, you can't tell me that anybody who would watch that press conference, that would listen to what she had to say, that even would read what she had to say, would not be compelled by that. I mean, it was it was very, very compelling as a statement. So I think just based off of all of these different things, there has to be some sort of accountability that he has to take in order for not only him to move on, but just for the league office to then say, okay, here's what the appropriate punishment is going to be out of that. And I think that's going to be one of the most interesting things that comes out of this, because how do you even start to quantify what a punishment should be when you have this many cases and then some of them obviously are going to have to be settled. Maybe not all of them will be. It, it, it's a very, very complex situation, at least in my reading of it. And here's one of the reasons that settlement has value to Deshaun Watson and why Tony Busby may put his thumb on the scale. And this is all legitimate. Look, when you are trying to acquire justice for your clients, cash equals justice. The bigger the settlement, the bigger the verdict, the more justice you've acquired for your client. And for the lawyers who handle cases like this, you've seen the TV commercials. We don't get paid unless we get money for you. I remember when I was a kid and the litigation boom first started, and I was very confused. Like, wait a minute, you don't get paid? You don't get anything unless you settle? Well, that's not a very smart way to go about your business. What happens is you get a piece of the recovery. That's your incentive. That's what keeps your doors open. That's what pays your overhead. That's what allows you, if you're Tony Busby, to have a Rolls Royce or a Bentley or whatever that one car is that was in a a, an airport getting out of and his Ferrari and, you know, his ranch and all this. He's made money. He's been effective. He's boasts two billion dollars in recovery for his clients over the years. You you only take on cases where you can prove liability. There is significant damages and you know that the person you're suing has the money to pay. That's what you do. And you jack up the price as best you can. And when you have a tiger by the tail, like he does into Sean Watson, you pull until you get the maximum recovery for your client. And there's value here. And part of what he can give on behalf of his clients, Miles, and this ties back to what the NFL can or can't do, he can give to Deshaun Watson a commitment that these individuals won't cooperate. And I know that seems a little skeevy and seedy and wrong, but, but that, that's fair. It's proper. Confidentiality agreement, NDA. This is part of what you bargained for. These individuals will not co cooperate with the NFL. This is one of the big flaws in the NFL's investigative process, Miles. They can't compel anyone to talk other than Deshaun Watson. Now, that doesn't stop them from bringing in Deshaun Watson and asking extensive questions about why in the world do you have 40 different people giving you massages? And was there consensual sex that happened at these? And what's your version in response to these allegations? But if you don't have cooperation of the alleged victims, it makes it a little bit difficult to have a significant punishment under the personal conduct policy. But think back to Ben Roethlisberger. He got suspended ultimately four games for being sued for rape in Nevada. That never 
was resolved in court. I assume it was settled at some point. I, I recall it's one of those things that was so long ago I forget, but it, it never went to court. He was punished before it ever would have gone to court. And then he had the incident in Georgia in early 2010 that never was a lawsuit, never was an arrest, never was anything. And he got suspended four games for two. Here you got 22. Good luck if you're the NFL coming up with the right punishment for Deshaun Watson. I still think there's a chance he faces a significant, significant punishment. But you can't even get to the point where the NFL is ready to punish you while these cases are pending. He could be out of action for a year or two and then get punished on the back end. So this is his best move. Right. And, and that's what I think the commissioner's exemplus is, is for, right? And, you know, you've been calling for this for the last couple of days that he needs to immediately go on the commissioner's exemplus because, look, the Texans have enough problems already. I mean, we can say that from a football standpoint. And now we say it from a Deshaun Watson standpoint that they don't necessarily need the circus of also having to answer for something where they really can't say very much of anything because, I mean, look, it's not necessarily on the Texans what Deshaun Watson has done in his personal time. However, he is still an employee of the Houston Texans. So at a certain point, yes, they're going to be asked questions about it. But I think just from what, whatever standpoint we're at right now, there's no reason for Deshaun Watson to be anywhere near a football facility at this point in time. And the only the, the best way to do that is to put him on the commissioner's exempt list. And now, look, there's still a couple weeks or a week or two. I actually don't know when April 19th is because I don't know what day it is because time is an illusion at this point in my life. Um, but that's when the offseason program is supposed to begin. There's still a little bit of time before that. So they don't have to do this immediately, but it's almost like I feel like it's something that could be a Friday news dump tomorrow where we're about to get on the air or we're already on the air, Mike. And then we all of a sudden hear that, oh, yeah, this is something that's happened because they have to do something to just do something at this point. How do you not know what day it is? It's April 8th, the six month <laughs> countdown to your 30th birthday. It's not. But Did I get it? Did I get it? Did I no. get it? <laughs> Oh, I tried. No, but you're, gonna, you're, you're, you're in the ballpark, but you're not quite in. right. The uh, walls are closing in. We're eventually uh, going to get there. We're going to figure out when Miles' birthday is. All right. Um, yeah, I, I, and uh, yeah, another point that we talked about today on PFT Live, and I want to emphasize this. I don't know this, but I believe that Deshaun Watson, if these cases are still lingering when training camp starts, you know, we have been – condition to believe there's no way he's showing up there's no way he's showing up i think he's showing up if he's not already on the commissioner exempt list yeah. i think he's showing yep. up because you hold out you don't play you give up 20 million in fines forfeiture salary you show up you get put on the commissioner exempt list you get paid 10 million plus in salary to not play for the texans so circumstances have changed dramatically for deshaun watson and i think he will be there if he's not already put on the commissioner exempt list. But as I said yesterday, Miles, I know what the NFL's strategy is. There's no reason to create a major headline. NFL puts Deshaun Watson on paid leave. No reason to do it in the offseason when there's nothing to be put on leave from. But I think at some point it's on the NFL to react in a way that is stronger than issuing the perfunctory statement that says we're deeply disturbed by the allegations. Everyone's deeply disturbed by the allegations. That's not good enough. I think what the NFL needs to do here, what it has an obligation to do in order to prove that it takes this seriously, is do it now. Put him on the commissioner exempt list now, pending the resolution of all of these cases. Because then I, I think what it does, it kind of takes off the table this whole beat the clock idea of, what you know, well, we got to get this done before he's put on the commissioner exempt list. Look, put him on the commissioner exempt list, allow these cases to play out. If a settlement's going to happen, so be it. If not, fight it. But But we don't have this worry of... Well, you know, you better go ahead and, and write a big check because otherwise they're going to put you on the commissioner exempt list. They can say they already did. So we can set that aside and let's focus about what's right for everyone so we can get these cases resolved. Exactly. And that's the, that's, I think, the biggest thing is that it has to be something that works out for everybody who is not necessarily Deshaun Watson. I, that's, I think, at the forefront of my mind when you get these kinds of allegations, it doesn't necessarily have to be the best thing for him. But I think for the organization, for the, the, the people who he allegedly assaulted, these are the people who we got to keep in mind. And I think that by doing this, 
it's better for everybody involved because like you said there's no race against the clock there's no oh no this is about to training camp is about to happen there's nothing is like that so I think it also kind of, if you look at it from the league office standpoint it also kind of takes that decision out of the hands of the Houston Texans who would assume I would maybe assume say like hey you can probably stay away from any off-season activity mandatory mini camp training camp what have you until these cases are resolved right so if you do that from the league office it also takes that pressure off of the Houston Texans I think that that is just the way to do it for everybody involved to show that, hey, we're taking this seriously. And also we know that there has to eventually be some sort of resolution and some sort of accountability. And this is kind of our avenue of making sure that that can happen without Deshaun Watson being on a roster currently. And Texans would have a very strong reason to want everything to get resolved so they could trade Deshaun Watson and not pay him anything this year and get value yes. in return for his services. So, the hearings are tomorrow. There's at least two of them, and I believe this is about forcing Tony Busby to the table to try to settle these cases before the draft in the hopes of getting Deshaun Watson traded before the draft. There's still hope if they can do this. And again, in saying it, I'm not suggesting that Deshaun Watson pay hush money or make it go away. Or you know, Look, he needs to stand up, take his reckoning, make things right with each of these 22 individuals. It's not going to be easy to do, but I think he needs to do it. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.